Mood boards are one of the most important parts of the interior design process, as they are often the thing that sells your design to your client. They're a great way to start a meaningful conversation between you both throughout the design process. Mood boards are a 2D representation of something that we're going to create in 3D. But mood board composition has more in common with graphic design than interior design. When we put one together, we have to obey the rules of graphic design. I create the composition first and then place it within my title block. Usually I'm presenting it via a presentation software such as Keynote, and this will happen whether it's via a Zoom or live. This happens in a presentation meeting, which occurs at the beginning stages of a project. There are two main types of mood board, concept boards, which may show more of a vibe and is used to check the direction of where you're heading with your client. This may include images of finished spaces and then the mood board, which shows specific pieces and finishes for the client's approval. In this space, the client liked the soft pinks of this dining room. So we're going to use this as an inspiration in this design for a dining room, we have two spaces. We want to show them together as they're in the same room. The first space is the dining space and the second space is a seating area. The client loves stone and metal and unusual shapes. So we brought together pieces that have an organic feel, but are different with rich colors and luxurious materials. They include things such as a silk rug, brass and stone pieces. So you could present your mood board like this, where you just have a list of all the items, your design that you'd like to incorporate. And you could just organize it very neatly and make sure that everything lines up and looks neat. So you can adjust it like this and make sure all the gaps are even and that would do the job. One of the arts of mood boards is trying to actually simulate that 3D space using, using a 2D method. The first stage is actually drawing a grid. So as you can see, I've divided this page into 24 squares, six squares by four squares. So you can use this grid no matter what size of presentation. I suggest that you design with the final presentation in mind. So if it is in A3, then divide that space into 24 squares and so on. You can divide it again if you wish, but just make sure that you keep to the squares and that you're aligning your images to whatever size space that you will use. So the first step is using a hierarchy. So let's start with our rug, which is the largest piece in the space. And we can also add in our floor. So you can see here, we can bring in a screenshot that I have of a floor and move it around. So then we can just position it backward. So to sit behind the rug and we can see here, it's quite neatly sitting in this space. So choose the pieces that you want to go in your room. Start to keep the sizes of the piece proportional to this space. Start with the floor as this is going to be the most dominant material and layer your pieces on the top, keeping to the grid. As you can see, this image, the items are really bunched up. There's no symmetry here. We haven't really looked at where they fit. You can see this is the edge of the grid and it's not aligned with the light. So what we want to do is try and fit these pieces like a jigsaw puzzle into a symmetrical composition. We're drawing the viewer's eye around the room. So we want to put in the base layers first and then move the eye to the accessories. In this demonstration, I'm using Canva, but you can use any software that you want, whether it be Photoshop, Illustrator or layout. Pay careful attention to balance and the way that you place the items in proportion to each other. You want to show your client how everything works together. Now I'm going to show you how not to do it. In this composition, everything's bunched up together. There's limited space and there's no symmetry. There's no understanding of proportion. So don't do it this way. So step three, layering and perspective. 
I've purposefully chosen images that have a sense of space. This is not a flat lay, but meant to give an impression of how the items look in the room. So I've chosen images that show perspective. You need to have some sense of detail and we can do this by layer smaller accessories like vases and glasses. So they are there to add realism and interest, but not to dominate the space. Step four, colors, materials. As designers, this is the easy part. Before we start, we usually have a palette in mind and we're searching for pieces that work together. However, don't forget that you should add some different materials and maybe something unexpected to add pace and interest to your composition. You can use a tool like coolers and I have a video that explains how to use this and check the cards to design on the background that enhances your palette or you could use the paint color that you've chosen as a background for your design. Step five, create a focal point for the space. In this design, there are two separate areas, a dining area and a seating area that's in a different part of the room. The items on the table draw the viewer's eye towards the table and the light and the artwork frames this composition. In the seating area, I've centered the marble side table and it's framed by the two chairs. The brass sconce, though in proportion above, is at the same level of the artwork. It's also of a similar color to the yellow chair and we can see the unity in the composition. So often when we're designing, we choose things that repeat similar themes or colors. So this is our symmetrical composition. I've moved things around so we can see that this rug here is centered in this half of the page. And then we have our two spaces. So this is our seating area. This is our dining room. Here we've got our table, which is just the focal point of our dining room centered. And so our eye will seek balance. We could have moved the artworks in line with this, but that would make it completely out of proportion to the room. So I've kept it aligned with this line here. I've aligned the light here. So we've got this nice frame between the edge of the carpet and this light. This area is contained. With this space here, we've left the rug as a backdrop to add some sort of textural quality. But obviously we understand that this rug isn't intended to hang on this wall. But I've also ended up ensuring that we also have a sense of space. We have our chair, which is in proportion to the stool and this little side table. And you can see here, there's this idea of perspective. This is slightly more forward than this and this, but we could play around with how you look. This table is centered in between this grid. The rule of thumb in, with sizing this is to make it as realistic as possible in terms of proportion, but also try and keep within the grid. So you could try, for example, like move that to a side. So we've got this half sitting on the edge of the rug. We can line that up quite neatly there. You can see it's centered within that grid. You can play around with minor adjustments, but ultimately we want to just ensure that our pieces of furniture and accessories have some sort of balance to them. For example, if you look at this chair here, it's right in the center of this line here. And what you end up with is a quite a balanced composition. I've added in a floor here, which is in perspective. So it gives a more realistic idea. You could add a skirting board or to make it even more realistic. But here you do get an impression of two sides of the room, two particular areas. There's a center line division and, and there's balance on either side. I usually leave a bit of a margin around the edge because it, in meetings, we tend to write a lot of notes. So I do leave quite a lot of white space. We just center these around and we can make some comments on them as we see fit. So here we have, here is our final result. 
we have a balanced space with the impression of a 3D space using some 2D images. It is, there are two distinct areas as the composition is balanced in half and we've balanced the focal points on each of these quarter lines. Thank you for watching. For more helpful advice for interior designers, whether you're established, emerging or aspiring, make sure that you subscribe so that you don't miss a thing. See you in the next video.